In this interview, I speak to Frédéric Chaudier, president of the Ventoux AOC in the Rhone, who is talking about their sustainability efforts and also the probably more positive impact the changing climate has had on their uh, quality of the wine that they're producing. This is an interesting insight into a small but becoming more noticed appellation. So the, the DNA of our terroir is very much linked to our mountain. Yeah. And, and that mountain creates a kind of cooler climate all around the AOC. Um, so as you can see on, the, on that beautiful map, we, we have like the, the mountain is about 2000 meters high and around it there are lots of, lot of topography. And we are kind of half an hour east of chateauneuf du pape but much higher up. And mm-hmm. the, the influence of the mountain really gives very cool nights and very warm days. And it's di- this difference of temperatures that creates this unique climate that yeah. defines Vendoux. For a long time, that climate was a bit challenging in terms of getting maturity, especially in the 70s or in the 80s. But with climate change, we've really seen on the contrary, we've, we've kept the good acidity that was the second nature of the AOC. And, and this is something that many of our neighbors are losing now. And so we, and of course, we don't have problems anymore to reach maturity. It's, it's kind of the done thing. But the, the balance with acidity and maturity has never been better than, than now, pretty much. Okay. And uh, because um, climate is so defining of our terroir, it's also become a, a priority in the way we define ourselves and, and try to project ourselves. Okay. So uh, we've done some climate, like some studies with the INRAE, um, which is a scientific institution in France that really focus on um, agronomic and environmental research yeah. and to see where where we'll go you know in the next 20 30 50 years and we feel we are very blessed to be in this position because um, despite climate change we'll still be able to adapt and make wine for the next decades okay so and looking at this this map you're sort of just slightly north, but, but to the east of Chateau neuf du yeah. And you mentioned that they having more of a time dealing with the, the heat in the warm. Well, I mean, to give you like a practical example, when my father started in the 80s, we would start harvesting around the 25th of September. And then, back then, in Chateau neuf they would start between the 5th and the 10th. Now, usually, they start harvesting late August, when yeah. we start harvesting around the 10th. So there's been a shift for about two weeks, if, if not more, in the last 30, 40 years. And so I suppose it makes it more challenging for Chateauneuf, but the, the thing that is sure for us is that it, it provides, you know, the balance I was telling you about yes, before, yes, that, yeah. that we're more difficult to have. Okay, and you're seeing so more consistency in the ripening and the sort of this development. The, the, the only downside we've, we've seen in 17 and on this vintage is the fact that we, we have now frosts that can happen at a moment when the vines have already started. And you know, 30 years ago, the vines would not have started their cycle. So yes. these episodes of frosts can be quite deadly to us. Have you got any methods or interventions that might make you more resilient to those frosts? That's quite a common, common problem these days. It is very difficult to, um, if, if you think about what happened in 21, the, and it, it went down to minus eight, minus nine, yeah, and, and the frost started like midnight or one in the morning, and we had negative temperatures for like seven or eight hours, so it's very difficult to find. The best way would be to prune the latest, at the latest possible time, so that the vines will be protected. We, yeah. we have the chance to have a few plots. Usually the plots that are in the parks that can, can actually be exposed to frost are the last one we prune. But it is impossible, unfortunately, to prune all the AOC so late yeah, that yeah. they will be Short protected. Latest. So we, we don't have a real solution against frost, I think. There's, there's no magical ones. So that's one thing. It's just a kind of threat. In terms of sustainability, which is a buzzword, wherever you go in, in this um, exhibition, 
what's the attitude or the, the movement in Ventu looking like? Well, we, we've started a bit more than a year ago um, a big consultation of yeah. um, all our growers and um, we were very happy to have more than 200 answers coming back from cooperators, independent wineries and uh, so we've gathered lots of ideas from this process uh, that then, you know, we structured all these ideas, had a second consultation in May 21, which then gave us, a kind of, uh, helped us to hierarchize a plan and three main directions where we want to go as a collective to, to really, you know, yeah. become a more exemplary AOC. Um, so basically, we, we've been the first AOC to do its purpose. We, yeah. In French, we say the raison d'être. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and um, we've given birth to these nine main actions that we want to follow in the next years. But the, the three main directions is the protection of the, of the living. The second is the reduction of our impact. And, and also the, the third one is sharing and cultivating more the, the local life, being more part of yeah. the attractivity of our territory. Yes. And among all this, basically, we we want one of the main, the main objectives is to reduce by 30% our carbon footprint. Yep. And the main two tools we'll have for that would be um, first to we want to triple the cover crop in in the vines of the AOC. Um, we had the chance to do no late no later than two weeks ago. Yes. I think. A, a first. Um, participative event that gathered about 80 producers, searchers, wow, okay. um, institutional of the AOC to think about um, cover crops in the AOC, which varieties would be more adapted, when to make it, with which, which kind of machine, and to really launch a collective um, reflection about it. And this is going to be one of the mainstays of, uh, of the actions of the very near future. The second thing we're working on and that that is quite ambitious is to and i'm not sure if i know how to say that in english but is to is to build um, a réseau de consigne and um, is to make sure that we reuse more our bottles okay. the bottle itself represents about 40 percent yeah, of yeah, the carbon yeah. footprint yeah. of, of um, it in the Ventoux, as in many other AOCs, really. And so we, we are starting to gather and to create a network of wineries that will hopefully be able to gather some bottles, have them washed, and we're in discussion with a firm that is based in Avignon for that, and then re deliver the bottles so that we can start that kind of virtual cool. cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, these, these are among the the main uh, um, actions we are, we are kind of um, holding right now, and there's um, a, a history of the Ventoux Mountain that is, is dear to many of us. Is the, we wouldn't think now, you know, when we come to the AOC, because there's 30,000 hectares of forest, but in the middle of the 19th century, the mountain was just kind of a bold rock. There was there was no trees anymore and some amazing reforestation policies were launched at the end of the 19th century. Wow. So we also want to, to do our little share of that and keep on um, planting the objective is to plant 30,000 trees back 2030. So you're getting into sort of regenerative, bringing back what was there. Oh, fantastic. So, I mean, it's never a, a flipping the switch, is it, to, to get to where you need to be. It's, a bit, it's always a journey. So. Vantu is is on the on the journey. We started to walk in. How will you how will you start communicating what you're doing to the outside world, to the consumers or drinkers or whatever you want to call it? Well, I think how we want really to um, communicate by by the proofs of our yeah. actions. So our our idea is now to we've announced our objectives, but will really launch the communication once we can show you know the first results yeah. of, of these objectives so we, we're trying to shape that calendar of um, cover crop of reusing of the bottles uh, planting trees 
we'll communicate once we were able to do that. And so you're using, in that sort of proof element, you're using a lot of auditing processes outside, independent sort of analysis, that kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. And just to end on then, if you look forward to the rest of this decade, which if you, you know, I cover a lot of climate change stuff and everyone says this is the ultimate decade. If we don't do it now, we're stuffed. What's the, what's the sort of, the positive, the, the optimist in you that's looking forward to this decade and thinking, yeah, you know, we've got a good shot of doing all this stuff. Well, I mean, I told you about our will to reduce our footprint, but beyond this objective and beyond these actions, um, I think the dearest objective we're carrying is, is to create a stronger collective, to federate more all the different wineries of the AOC. And, and we feel that there is a great dynamic already in that in that direction, and uh, you know you've you've met other growers from the AOC. There's lots of young blood, and foreign blood that, that came in and that helped accelerating I think the um, premiumization of yeah. our AOC. But for me, in 2030, beyond all the environmental objectives, the success will will first come from really building that collective. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much for speaking to me. It's been great to meet you. Thank you very much, David.